Hey, welcome everyone to this week's Weekly Missions Roundtable with your West Coast Hub. I am Anthony English, the Assistant Director for the Hub. I am the, what, right-hand man, second-in-command, Scotty Pippen, to Mike Pettengill, who is our Director, Boss Man, say hey. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And of course, we have Ali Hazradi, our administrative assistant, the glue that holds the hub together. Ali, say what up. Hey, well, thanks for joining us today. I said, say what's up, not hey. <laughs> but that's fine. That, that's fine. Ali's also the contrarian, never wants to follow the, the rules. So with that being said, <laughs> we have a really interesting and I think needed topic we're going to be discussing. Because when we talk to people about global missions, one of the things that comes up is homesickness, you know, not wanting to leave America because of how much they'll miss family, friends, their culture, the comforts that they've grown up in. And it is a hard thing to give those up in order to pursue the call of global mission. So Mike and Ali have actually been on the field for quite some time. And we really wanna hear from them today. And so with that being said, uh, Mike, the ball is yours. You know, how'd you deal with the reality of being homesick? Because just because you love Jesus doesn't mean you don't get sick, you don't get homesick and you don't deal with, you know, the common emotions that everyone deals with. So yeah, talk yeah. to us. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, a, a fine line when you're on the mission field between um, embracing your host culture and embracing your home culture and you you've got to find a balance between those two because you're if my family went to latin america and we didn't figure out how to make tortillas and we didn't figure out how to get involved in the in the regular annual celebrations and we didn't figure out the the popular music that was there and we didn't get get down with soccer then we we weren't what were we going to talk talk with the, the nationals about we you have to embrace the culture you're in but that doesn't mean you completely forego your culture and this is especially true for for missionaries that either have kids or bring kids onto the mission field because you you want your kids to do the same you want them to embrace their host culture and embrace their home culture simultaneously and so we raised a daughter uh, through elementary school, junior high uh, and high school on the mission field, the, the formative years. And um, we had our daughter memorize all seven sonnets of the Honduran national anthem. At the same time, we had her make sure she knew uh, the US national anthem and the, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, you can't forego your home culture. Um, you, you can't forego having family around it. And with tech, it's a lot easier now. You may have some sort of limitations based on the country you're in or the, the technology that's available to you, but you still want to, you, you want the kids to zoom with grandma and grandpa and uncles mm -hmm. and aunts, and you want to make sure that you're a part of what's going on. You know, if your family got together for Saturday morning college football every fall, then get together for Saturday morning college football every fall. Zoom in with your family and cheer for your team. And, and you know, if, if 4th of July was a big deal for you, continue having 4th of July as a big deal. Also embrace the, the, the national uh, holidays uh, for your host country. But you, you can't just say, hey man, I'm I'm in country X. I'm no longer American. You, you can't, you can't do that. Um, you got to, you know, my, my wife is, is, is huge on certain meals, right? She wants, she wants a uh, uh, corned beef for St. Patrick's day, you know, and she wants uh, ham for Christmas morning. And, and so, you know what, wherever we were, if they didn't have corned beef, she figured out how to make corned beef from scratch. If, 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 they didn't sell hams in the grocery store or at the market. She figured out how to get a, get a uh, ham hock from, from a, a local neighbor. And, and we continued those traditions. And then in addition, um, 
you know, we had a regular, like every, every Friday was um, uh, homemade pizza, homemade beer, and uh, either uh, uh, video games or movies. And we'd sit down as a family and every Friday, don't care where, you, nope, nope, you can't go out Friday night. We're doing this right. This is family night, right? So, and we, so we brought those, those home traditions back in. Um, homesickness is a big deal. It's why a lot of missionaries leave the field. Um, but again, let me just close out and pitch it over to Allie. You, you, you have to have that balance. Uh, you really do want to embrace your, your host culture, but you can't forget your home culture. You can't, um, with technology the way it is, there's so many ways. I, I mean, we had supporters that would, that would find ways to bring home to us. So I had a big friend that every time there was a, a UFC fight, man, I was at that guy's house for pay-per-view, right? And so when we went on the mission field, guess what that dude did? He recorded every pay-per-view on DVD and sent it to me where, where, wherever I was. And there's those little things that our supporters did to embrace, to help us to embrace the homesickness and, and to, to to while we're falling in love with our host culture that we're remembering our home culture. So find that balance, acknowledge that it's real and, and, um, and don't feel like you're sinning or you're, or you're turning your back on your host culture by remembering your home culture. That was good. That was good. Allie, you get to follow up with that. You get to follow up. How'd I know I should have gone first. I think, um, I think, going on the mission field or even just living abroad in another culture gives us such a unique opportunity to as we're living in the kingdom of God on the side of heaven that because when we get to heaven we're all going to be together right every tribe every tongue every nation is going to be together and so yes I'm an American I have the blue passport I'll always be an American but especially now being married to someone who's not yet an American almost an American um your cultures kind of blunt. And when you live in some, when you live in another culture, there's some cool things about other cultures that we adopt when we live there and we bring them back here. So I've at least found myself, I don't know if you've felt this, Mike, I'm guessing probably so, that you don't feel like you totally 100% fit in in whatever culture you're in now. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I mean, think it's let me interrupt you to support your, your idea. My daughter, um, I think my daughter stole this from someone, but she used to say that, if you assign a, a color to a culture, right? And let's say being American is yellow, um, um, and but being Honduran is blue, right? So you're on the mission field and it just doesn't matter if you're a kid or an adult, you'll never, ever, ever again be fully yellow. Mm -hmm. And no matter how long you're in that host country, you will never, ever, ever be blue. For the rest of your life, you're green. <laughs> You don't fit in perfectly in yellow or blue. You're green for the rest of your life. And that's cool. And you get to embrace that. You get to, uh, to love parts of multiple cultures. Thank you. That's a much better example than what I had. So thank you. <laughs> you thank, thank my daughter. <laughs> thank you for stealing it, Maddie. <laughs> so I, and because I don't want to get left out, it's like Superman. Not fully Kryptonian, <laughs> not fully human. Half Kryptonian, half human. That, that is my contribution. But um, as, I'm <laughs> as I'm listening to both of you, the thing that keeps running through my mind is what Jesus says to the disciples. Um, you know, he, he truly does, he's fully man. I think we forget that he's fully human. He knows what it is to get homesick. So when the disciples, you know, say, well, listen, I know they've walked away from you, but we actually have left all to follow you. Jesus doesn't say, well, I'm worth it. You should have left all to follow me. He goes, no, you have. He acknowledges, yes, you have. And he acknowledges their sacrifice and he honors it. He goes, you will be repaid. There's no one that's left father, mother, houses or lands for my sake that will not be repaid in this life and in the age to come. So for, you know, for our missionaries who are experiencing this extreme homesickness, and who are really struggling and dealing with it, please know that Jesus knows the pain and sorrow. He knows what it is to feel homesick and he acknowledges your, your sacrifice of love for him and for others. And he says, listen, you will be repaid for everything that you've, for, you know, that you've left for my sake. 
So when I read that, I really do, not only do I fall more in love with Christ because I'm like, oh, he's a God who understands. He's not a God who says, well, of course you leave off for me. I'm God, <laughs> I'm the Messiah. He's like, no, I get it, it's hard. I fully grasp how hard of that is. You will be repaid for your sacrifice for me in the kingdom. I think that's so amazing. And I think that also must be so encouraging for those who are experiencing that homesickness even now as they seek to, to, to spread the kingdom of God you know, in their, their host country. So. Yeah. Allie, what are some, um, some like practical, tangible things you did when you were on the mission field to, to fight off homesickness or to, to, to stave it off a little bit? Yeah. I remember being there at Christmas. It hit me really hard. Of course, you know, it's a big holiday with your family and I was looking up tickets to fly home and they were so stupid expensive. And I was so thankful. My aunt was like, don't come home today there because uh, some other missionaries in the field had, invited me to go skiing with them and I'm not a skier um, but I was like oh my gosh what am I gonna do I can't ski but I went and it was one of the sweetest times even later years later when I'd go visit them the picture from all of us skiing they had three kids and they had the picture of me with them and their whole family like on big display in their house and all the kids would even joke like Allie you infiltrated our family and I think that's like the best like thing that other missionaries on the field, because I was a single gal, they op- they welcomed me with open arms and I felt it was such a sweet Christmas. It had nothing, I don't even know if I got any presents and that was not even it, but we spent, I spent the best time with this family in a ski resort. <laughs> um, and those just sweet memories. And I was thinking about this and it's so hel- it was so helpful to have other Americans I knew, believers and non-believers in country, um, that we could get together and talk about it and like, because after every, I can't remember the exact months, you might know better, Mike, is it like three months in or four months in another country, everyone goes through that, that culture shock where you just start to hate the country you're in, and then you get over it, and everything's okay, it depends on different people how long it takes to get over that hump, but I was in it very hard for a while, um, and I just remember how encouraging it was to talk to other people who were also struggling, and how ways they coped with the culture shock and how to get over it and move forward towards it and how to just kind of reconcile it. But I remember also having Thanksgiving with another friend. We were going to go to another American's house to have Thanksgiving, but she got sick. So my friend and I ended up going to a kebab house in her neighborhood. And it turned out to be like the sweetest friendship relationship that lasted for years after that, that we would go back and they would recognize us. They knew what we wanted. And there's just a really great opportunity when you uh, dive into where God has planted you in that moment. And, and the thing I like about this conversation is, is, is that most of us um, reform folks are no different, are so works oriented that if we, if we acknowledge uh, that we're homesick or that we miss traditions or we miss friends, it's, it's uh, well, Ali, uh, you need to work on your faith a little bit better. Um, you know, you, you need to, you know, and that's where we fall on that kind of stuff. And the reality is, is, is if you don't have any kind of homesickness, you're the exception, not the rule um, that all of us go through. It is just a natural part. We, we covet our culture. We covet what we know. And, um, and so we want to we want to say, oh no, God's got me. I'm, I'm embrace myself in the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ, and that's the only tradition I need. Okay, tell tell it's not. It's like why are you lying? No, let's be honest. Why you don't don't lie? That's not all you need because God created you with a culture and a country, and we're dual citizens. So yeah, I, it's great hearing from you guys. Um, if you're a missionary and you're watching this and you are experiencing this homesickness, please um, don't hesitate to reach out to Mike, to Allie, uh, to myself. I know I'm not a missionary, but I can try to make you laugh and you know help you out in that way. But please don't, feel, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to one of us. And we would love to discuss with you and talk with you and just you know pray with you and just kind of kick it virtually with you. So we're here for you. We are your West Coast Hub. We love you. And uh, we, wanted to, we want to minister to your needs as much as possible. With that being said, this brings us to the end of this week's weekly missions roundtable. 
If you are interested in global missions, click that link either in the description below if you're watching on YouTube or in the description above or the link above if you're watching on Facebook. Click that, we'll reach out to you. If you're in a different part of the United States, someone in that region will reach out to you. You can find us on YouTube, um, of course, MTW West Coast. You can find us on Facebook, MTW West Coast Office, or you can find us at mtw.org forward slash West Coast. With that being said, we love you guys. God bless, and we'll see you next week. See y'all.